call it the Governor's Cup. We're going to go to Fleming Fieldhouse for Jeff City's Dominique Leak ahead to George Tyus with the Monster Dunk. And he thanks Leak with the Forearm Bash. Ow! Elias back. Jordan Olofsson with the spin move. He gets the deuce and the damage. That sends him to the free throw line. Again, coach will see. Trent Tremaine heated up from outside. The two-point shot. And then Tremaine will step behind the arc and hit the three-pointer. Elias is up 18 points at half. But they will blow the lead. And Jeff City will come back and win. Miss Fortson, I guess it was a pretty exciting last few minutes of the basketball game, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I'm worn out just covering <laughs> this thing. I'm starting to get used to it for Elias. This is the second time they've done this this year or been involved in this type of game. A wild one any two time these teams meet. Again tonight it happened. An important bragging rights battle tonight in the capital city because neither school really owned bragging rights since the girls basketball teams split their games earlier this season. But one school would earn bragging rights tonight as the boys teams clashed for the first time. As always a huge crowd on hand for this one. It was all Helias early. Trent Tremaine open behind the arc. Hits the three-pointer and gets fouled. It's a four-point play. Helias up 19-7. Satyrs kept pouring it on. Justin Clever with the basket. Helias led 32-14 at the half, but J.C. comes back in the second. George Tyus with the putback, and the Jays only trailed by three. Later, it's Dominique Leak. He misses his first shot, but gets his own rebound to give J.C. a one-point lead. Helias now down by three with under 15 seconds to play, and Cole Bringer hits a three-pointer to tie it. Leak, though, with the ball with under 10 seconds to play. Game Winner. Helias misses their last second shot. The Jays win a wild one, 50 to 48. The Missouri men's basketball team opened Big 12 play with a loss. Fun night around mid-Missouri. It's been a busy week for area high school basketball tournaments and shootouts, all of those. Some of them finishing up tonight and also tomorrow night. One event that was tipping off this evening, uh, the annual Jefferson City J Central Bank shootout. JC hosting three other teams in the two-day classic. We'll take you over to the Jays' home away from home, Thomas Jefferson Middle School. They played there because they're wrestling at the Fleming Field House tonight. Jays' Dominique Leak with a bevy of blocks. This one leads to the Jeff City fast break. Jason Mantle lays it in. Jays scored the first eight points of the game. Jay's running again. Watch the nice passing here. Mantle bouncing over to Leak. Pretty play for the two. Bringing on the Jay's Booster Club version of the wave. Tough for Hazelwood to keep up with J.C. tonight. Three Spartans suspended, including a player by the name of Eric Mays, believe it or not. Guys like that can be trouble, you know. Jays led by 13 at the half, 26 to 13. JC all over the boards. Look at Dominique Leak following. He had 15 tonight. Dave Fox's team on the move again. George Tyus will lay in two of his 13. Jason Mantle led the way with 19 tonight with our own Thetis Theanos looking on. She watched the Jays win a good one. This is Jefferson City and Hazelwood East, and it was all Jefferson City. In fact, a lot came from this guy, Jason Mandel. Fakes to the inside, hits the long range three. Mantle also likes to go inside with the lane as JC goes up early five to nothing. Then Dominique Leak, he takes it coast to coast. You go that way, I'll go this way with the lay-in. He's fouled, count it. Mantle again, he likes that spot. Ooh, long range three. Then Leak says, I really don't appreciate that shot, so I'm gonna do that to it. Then I'm gonna pass it up court to my buddy, Jason Mantle, as he pours it in. More Jefferson City. All Jefferson City against Hazelwood East. All the cherry picking you can handle is number 15 again. Big night for that kid. Also, a big night for Leak. Ah, look at the lay-in. 26-13 was the halftime score. Here's Leak again. I believe Leak and Mantle comprised all but two points for the Jays in the first half. And yes, the cheerleaders can spell. Here comes the Y. There you go. Let's take a look at some local scores around mid-Missouri tonight. Central
time shootout. One of the best matches of the day, Dave Fox's Jefferson City Jays taking on Kickapoo. First half action, Jason Mantle knocks down the three-pointer. Later, watch number 32 here. Dominique Leak makes him look silly. Gets juked so bad he falls down. Game tied at 28 at the half. Late in the game, though, Kickapoo led by six. Under a minute left to play. Leak over to Herman Grant. The three-pointer cuts the lead to three. Just 30 seconds to go now. A four-point game, and Herman Grant does it again. The three-pointer pulls the Jays to within one. Just two seconds left now. JC with a chance for the win, but Jason Mantle's shot doesn't go. He got a good look, but Kickapoo hangs on to win by one, 55. Out in Columbia today, eight different mid-Missouri basketball teams with a chance to live out a dream of playing on the Hearn Center hardwood. The feature big school game, Jefferson City and Springfield Kickapoo, the Kickapoo Chiefs. Kickapoo's Eric Johnson. Number 11, knocking down the 15-footer. I measured it. I really didn't. I wasn't there. Jeff City, now Dominique Leak show. Nice move inside for the basket. Not once, but twice. Look at Dominique Leak, Columbia College head coach Bob Burchard, and our guest later on tonight, Missouri assistant John Hammond, enjoying the action. Closing minute, J.C.'s Herman Grant hitting the second of consecutive threes, but the Jays lose a close one, 55. To of basketball next on the Jayhawks. For the Tigers. And while Mizzou and Kansas cleared out of Hearns today, it left the building open and available for the MFA Oil break time shootout. A mere six high school games in 10 hours. A hoop junkies dream day. And we start with Jefferson City and Springfield Kickapoo. Four A powers. Here come the Jays. George Tyus clearing them out underneath. He had 12 boards, nine points. Jays in good shape, but not when this shot happened. Look at that from Kickapoo. A mid court <laughs> prayer is answered before the buzzer. Tied at 28 at halftime. Second half, though, Tim Bannon on fire. Five three-pointers, 15 points. The Jays down one, closing seconds. There's the shot at the buzzer. No good off the rim. Kickapoo hangs on to win it, 55-54. Chris, we play a schedule like this. I mean, um, sometimes I think our kids don't realize, you know, every game we play is going to be against a very tough opponent. And, um, you know, the conversation in the locker room is, you know, we're at Mexico on Tuesday, and uh, they better, you know, lick their wounds tonight and get ready to get to work tomorrow at practice because I guarantee you Tuesday night will be an absolute war. And if we're not ready to play, uh, you know, uh, good things aren't going to happen. NBC8, more and more coverage, not just Jeff. Hoops fans around in Mexico. Jefferson City in red. Herman Grant off the glass gets the bucket, but Scott Floyd's Bulldogs barked back. Joe Thompson hits and draws the foul. Three point play. Bulldogs up by five at the half, 24 19. Mexico again. Thompson, three point range. The senior guard finished with 23, but the Jays, Dominique Leak had 28. They went to overtime where the Jays won it, 64 57. JC improves to 11 and 5. Mid Missouri rivals Helias and Fulton hooked up in Jefferson City tonight. All tied at 32. Dominique Leak takes over the steal. Leak with a finish. Jays in your face up by two. Leak had some help though tonight. George Tyus gets the hoop and the harm. Jays still rolling with an eight point lead. Everyone had a big night. Herman Grant though had the biggest. 18 points, a new season high for the senior. Later, Sam McMahon for the deep three. Jays win 55 to 43. By the way, Big George finished with 13 points. Continuing on, Hallsville on the road to Southern Boone Classic. Blair Oaks flies tonight in Ashland. First for most of the season. The This season is flying by, and believe it or not, just one month away from March Madness, a busy February basketball Friday night around mid-Missouri, including a pair of games in the capital city. Interesting matchup at J.C. High, where Dave Fox and the Jays played host to the winningest high school basketball program in the entire country, Collinsville, Illinois. The Cahawks in Jefferson City tonight will go down to the Fleming Fieldhouse, and this was a low-scoring affair. Cahawks out of Collinsville, 
brought in a big basketball tradition. Jays carrying a three-point lead. The Cayhawks led it early, but the Jays finally got their first field goal. Three minutes left in the first half. George Tyus completing the three-point play. Halftime score, get this, it was 14 to 11. Jays trail, second half. Jays dominate Gleek, scores. Then, finishing the break here, over to Dominique. He stuffs it home. The Jays would trail the entire way until Dave Fox's team took the lead. George Tyus, bucket midway through the fourth quarter. That put the Jays up 27 to 26. But Collinsville went back on top with this short jumper on the baseline. And Collinsville hit free throws down the stretch to win it 43 to 38. The final Jays right back in action tomorrow afternoon, 2.30 against Lafayette. Down the street at Helias High School, one of our favorite refs, Chris Leichel, working the game, all business, and a little smoke. Much of a chance to get rest after playing Collinsville last night, but the Jays come through every day. Jason Mantle for three there, then it's Dominique Leak taking it in for two. The inside game looks good, and so does the outside. Herman Grant drops it in from three point land. Later, Mantle again. Jefferson City tops Fayette 52 to 45. On the links today, second round action of the Pebble Beach Pro Am. cried out to God and let me show you how God answered this. I'm here to tell you God will Jefferson City, the Jays and Hickman, they played some nail biters over the years. One big exception, the last time they met, J.C. won by 30 in Columbia. A lot closer tonight at J.C. High. Let's go down to Fleming Fieldhouse for this one, where they honor George Tyus before the ball game, a McDonald's All-American candidate. Big George, though, missing a key teammate, Dominique Lee, out of school, sick all week long, didn't even suit up tonight. Jim Sutherland's Cubes coming in at 13-7. and seven. District's top seed on the line. Jays out to a quick start. Herman Grant trying to make up for Dominique's absence. Hits the three, then also goes to the hoop. Jays led it 15-4 to four early in the second quarter. Hickman steals, though. Brad Brickens goes all the way. Nifty move here for two. J.C. led it by four at the half. Jason Mantle knocks down the three-pointer. Coach Sutherland looking a little worried, but his QPs would dominate the third quarter, outscoring J.C. by 10. Brian Johanning drills the tray. This one went down to the wire. Look at Dave Fox trying to get the J fans into it. The Jays were down by four a minute to go. Grant finishing with 15, cut the lead in half there. But here's the key. Cupies bucket down the stretch. Great pass into Joe Best, who led Hickman with 13. The Cupies held on to beat the Jays 45 to 41. Different story than last month's blowout at Hickman. See that 30 point uh, deficit is, is a tough one to swallow, but uh, you know, in all fairness to Jeff City, they were short their best player, but uh, we'll take the win at, uh, at their place uh, since it hasn't happened in 10 years. We'll take it and go home. What was the key to the win tonight? Well, think? I, I think right there at the end of the second quarter where we were able to uh, get into them a little bit defensively, get some easy buck buckets, and then get back within four points, opened up uh, with a couple changes in the second half and got a lead and kept it. Good win for the Cupies. They move to four. Tyus muscles his way in, puts in the tough shot. Game tied at 27. Hickman will begin to pull away, though. Best from the corner. Cupies up nine. But the Jays would chip away. Jason Mantle with the no look to Tyus. And Coach David Fox says, hey, keep pushing it, boys. And they would. Tyus ahead of the pack again. Puts in the layup. Jeff City down two, halfway through the fourth. But Hickman stayed firm. Best again with a nice move through the lane. Hickman, he would lead Hickman with 13 points on the night. Cute fans begin to claim ownership of the Jeff City Jay. The Jays are simply running, but time winding down. Brickman tried to put the exclamation point on the game, 
Really didn't matter though. QP still won in Jayland, 45-41. Some other local boards to pass along. Weekend of American Legion Baseball. Jefferson City Post 5 seniors hosting the annual Charlie Ray Tournament. Opening tonight with Crestwood, Big Paul Miller, the 6-foot, 10-inch, soon-to-be senior at Blair Oaks High School, dominating on the mound early. A couple strikeouts here in the first inning of play. No score. J.C. Post 5 up in the second inning. Tyler Strope singled and Jared Eichen following with the double off the fence. That put runners on second and third. Nobody out. But Jefferson City couldn't score. Max Rodman grounds to third stroke, tossed out at the plate here. Then Eichen gets caught up between second and third, and he's out on a crazy double play. Post five fails to score. Jefferson City did convert a pair of their own double plays early. This one, Phil Pitts to Aaron Thompson over to Paul Miller. Nail biter tonight. Jefferson City post five, losing to Crestwood. One to nothing, Jefferson City will play again at 7 p.m. for age group. One of those competitors, a former Mizzou faculty member, Dean Baxter, who also played some college hoops for Hannibal LaGrange a few years back. Baxter's been a part of the senior games for seven years and will advance on to the national games next summer. That competitiveness, competitiveness doesn't leave. Uh, everybody plays hard. It's a camaraderie and uh, just the challenge to see what you can still do. We don't want to rust out. I don't think we're going to wear out. So we just want to keep going so we don't rust out. <laughs> the senior games continue this weekend. Aside from basketball, other competition includes shuffleboard, bowling, darts, racquetball, softball, swimming, table tennis, track and field, and much more. For this week's front nine hole of the week, we'll visit the award-winning... Dahlmeyer from Jefferson City has made it to the third round. Also, Kent Dinsdale from Rolla. That action heading into tomorrow. All right. Thanks, Ron. Mm -hmm. We'll be back. Elias Jays came back. Sean Demers with the RBI here. Derek Eilers came in. It was 6-6. Bottom of the sixth. Elias goes back on top. Pitts driving in Bowman with the RBI double. Crusaders would build a 10-6 advantage. But no lead is safe in this rivalry. Jays rally. Brad Howell goes deep to left. Over the wall. Hits the shed. Three-run home run. Cutting the Elias lead to 10-9. But that was it. Elias holds on to win it. Another thriller in the J.C. Elias baseball rivalry. Crusaders claim bragging rights this year. Downplay a little bit, to be honest with you. you know, I try to let the kids know it's just another baseball game. But uh, I think deep down, I knew it wasn't just another regular season baseball game. But uh, it's good to get a win against the Jays. And high school soccer. If you're a winner. Eight innings. High school hardball, Jefferson City looking to increase its win streak to eight this afternoon. Jays taking on Blue Springs in the championship game of the Capital City Invitational. The Wildcats coming in the number one ranked team in the state. First inning, Blue Springs trying to steal second, but Sean Demures makes a great throw to gun him down at second. After that, though, things get ugly for the Jays. Second inning, John Wilson singles to left field that brings home a run to put blue springs on top one to nothing later in the inning with two men on ian pennington cranks one deep over the center field fence a three-run home run blue springs goes on to win the championship 11 to nothing the saint elizabeth baseball team improved to six and one than most of the other ones. Baseball usually goes back and forth every year. And it uh, may again this year. J.C. got the best of Hickman in football and wrestling. Hickman beat the Jays in boys and girls basketball tonight. The rivalry went to the diamond. The annual regular season grudge match between the Jaybirds and Cupies 
won't be the last time they will meet this season. In Columbia, nice crowd and a cool night for baseball. Jays leading 1-0 in the third, looking for more. Graham Jones singles into center. Ryan Freeman trying to score from second, and he slides in safely. Jefferson City on top, 2-0. In the fourth, Jays explode for five runs. Bases loaded, Adam back, singles to left. Josh Webb, Corey Byram come home. 7-0, Jefferson City in command. Hickman, though, answering back in the bottom of the fourth. Ryan Cuban belts the two-run home run over the scoreboard to make it 7-2. But the Jays kept things going in the fifth. Josh Webb drives home another run. Aaron Thompson sliding in. Jays in control, 8-2 lead. Jaybird still not done. Bases loaded in the sixth. Brad Howells hit to left is dropped. That clears the bases. Three runs would score on the air. Jefferson City goes on to win the first meeting 11-5. Same two teams will meet again in the capital city May 3rd, probably again in districts. Elias, meanwhile, wins again. The Crusaders off to a 10-1 start. Mexico out playing hard and winning. Yeah, they are good rivals. And Jeff City making that road trip a very good one here. The Jays striking in the second inning, an RBI base knock to left, and Jefferson City led one to nothing. Bottom two here, Ryan Cubitt, the son of MU co-offensive coordinator Bill Cubitt, singling to right center. He would later hit a home run, number one in a Hickman uniform, but this day would belong to Jefferson City. Graham Jones at the dish, the RBI base hit to left, plating Ryan Freeman. The Jays had five in the fourth, and they win this one rather easily, 11 to five over Hickman. Well, only one Tiger taken this one. Game Jefferson. Well, have you ever thought about us just trusting God for this? Now, most pastors would say, well, thank you very much, and uh, move on. But some hard ball. Bruins scoring a run in the first. Jaybird's battling back to take the lead here in the bottom of the second. Sean Demers, two out, two run double. Game Jefferson City a 2-1 advantage. Rockbridge, though, regained the lead. Top of the third, Tim Ritters. Base it into right, chased home a pair of runs. Tyler Nivens comes in. Teddy Kloss also coming in to score. The bridge went up 3-2. Jays, though, scored five unanswered runs after that, beating the Bruins 7-3. Jefferson City has won nine straight, now 16-2 on the year. College baseball, Missouri beats Southwest tonight. The Tigers 27-17 on the year. Lincoln splits with Central Methodist in and the Wings try to even it up in hockey. They're the fifth ranked team in the state, the Jays are. Second inning, 3-3 game. Hickman's Ryan Cubitt with the triple. It's gonna score Dustin Turner and Jake Whiteside. 5-3 the score. But the Cubes could not hold the lead. Up 6-3 at this point. Jefferson City's Aaron Thompson is gonna get caught in this. We call this the pickle. It's supposed to be an easy out, right? But Thompson is gonna squeeze by the catcher. He is called safe, not out. Jefferson City would roll from there. Tough defense, Hickman there. You can't win games, committing errors, unfortunately. That was the case. Josh Webb and Derek Eilers for Jefferson City School. Jefferson City battling on the high school baseball field tonight. Jays and Cupids combined on 25 runs. A busy first inning, Justin Kelly's base hit scores Jake Whiteside, who later homered. He goes in head first there. Danny Perry slaps a single into right field, bringing home Ryan Cubitt. It was 2-0 Hickman. That's not all. Cubes get one more in the first. Jamie Jure loops a shot into center, driving home the third run. Hickman had led it 3-0 before the Jays even picked up a bat. When they did, J.C. loaded the bases, bottom of the first. Ryan Freeman comes in on the wild pitch. Two hits later. A key two out hit, Brett Bodenhammer, who had quite a day, four hits, four RBIs, drives in two here as the Jays win a slugfest, 15 to 10. Second win over the Cubes this year. Jefferson City now 19 and Well, actually, the last several, Jefferson City has had the upper hand. They had won seven in a row until this year over Helias. But 
Elias, evening things out a little bit. Two of the top high school baseball teams in the state just happened to make their home in the capital city. Elias opening the night at 16 and 2. The Jeff City Jays 19 and 2. One of those JC losses, the first game of the year against Elias. The rematch tonight at Legion Field on the west side of town. And we'll take a look at the highlights. There we go. Here's the game. Josh Orr of the Crusaders with the rip to right center. An RBI double plating Andrew Pitts. Helias Jr. Tyler Strope had the key hit earlier, a three-run home run. Helias went to the seventh, leading 5-3. to three. Sam LeCure on in relief of Brad Bowman struck out the first two batters in the final frame, then got this ground out to end it. Helias sweeps the Jays this year, winning tonight the final 5-3. That was one of our goals this year was to beat J.C. I mean, that's, that should be like that for any Elias or J.C. rivalry. I'm sure it is for J.C. To, one of their goals is to beat Elias. So uh, it was good for us to get the, get the sweep, but like I, like I just said, it, it's good for us to get these quality games come down district time. And, I mean, it's good for them, too. I mean, I mean they, they lost the game, but they played a heck of a game. Meanwhile, the championship game at the annual Fulton Tournament tonight. In the sixth, in high school baseball, Jefferson City wins. Blair Oaks big over St. E. Fatima wins over Vienna. Eugene clinches at least a tie for the conference title, beating Lynn Rockbridge and a two-run home run from Mark Kirchhoff. Bottom of the seventh inning, NCMC record now five and two. They finish second in the league. Klopp Baseball. First seed, Jason. Mark Kirchhoff trying to keep Rockbridge close with the double. Following that game, Hickman was disqualified for an illegal player, so Smith Cotton got to advance. Same two teams tonight, District 10 Baseball again. As we check these highlights, QP's looking on, bottom of the first. Guess who? Jay Next game, Rockbridge and Jeff City played the early game. Jeff City hadn't played in over a week, but they came out strong, scoring the first run of the game. Aaron Thompson would get the sack fly to left, scoring Ryan Freeman, who had just tripled. 1-0 Jays. Then in the second, Adam Bax is leaving the yard. Off this Jeremy Martin pitch, out into the parking lot, 2-0 Jays. Top of the third, though, Rockbridge gets on the board. Mark Kirchhoff, he's been their hot hitter. He'll get the RBI single. That would score a run. However, the Jays going to win 8-1. to one. In Columbia, the Bruins hosting the top-seeded Jays. Jefferson City's Adam Bax launching the solo home run in the second inning. That put J.C. up 2-0. The bridge got one back in the third. Mark Kirchhoff at the platter. He will single home Tyler Nivens. But that's all Rockbridge would get all day long. The Jays would get a couple more in the bottom of the third. Graham Jones coming up to bat. He would deliver a two-run base hit. Jays win this one easily 8-1. to one. Kurt Yeager's team improving to 22-4 and four on the year. And they will play Hickman for the district title on Thursday because the Cupes beat Sedalia 11-4. to four. This intro tonight, all I have to say is that the Hickman baseball team was awesome today. They upset Jeff City the state's fifth ranked team by a score of 15 to three. And yes, it was a one-sided affair and it started here in the first. Cubes jump out on top as junior Ryan Cubitt goes to right field. That's a base hit. Dustin Turner, Jake Whiteside score. Hickman was up five to nothing after one. It was now seven to nothing Cupies when Dustin Turner goes to the opposite field, gets it into the wind. That's out of there. He's pumped, three run shot, 10 nothing Cupies. Check out the defense, Ryan Cubitt at the plate. Ryan Cubitt in the outfield diving catch. It was that kind of a day. Hickman's up 12 to three when Justin Kelly provides a three run jack to the parking lot. Cupy's huge lead, bottom of the sixth. Jamie Duray ends it with a strikeout. The celebration ensues. Hickman is your district champs. They went 15 to three and after the game, the Cupies were talking about their win in districts. Uh, we wanted this very, very bad, especially against Jeff City. We didn't get to get him last year. We thought we would, but we got him this year, and we wanted to... Had a big hit here in the early going for Hickman, doubling in the first to score Dustin Turner and Jake Whitesides. Cupies led two-zip, and the offense continued for Hickman in the third. 
Dustin Turner homers to put Hickman up 10 nothing and the Cupies clobbered Jefferson City 15 to 3 to win the district championship. One other high school base at Rockbridge High. Big first inning for Hickman. Cupies exploding for five runs. Ryan Cubitt goes to right. It falls in. Dustin Truner and Jake Whitesides would score 2 0. Hickman on top. They weren't finished in the first. Jamie Jurey up to bat, singling in the hole here, plating Justin Kelly and Danny Perry. It was 5 0 Hickman before the Jays even stepped up to the plate. Second inning, Cupie's got two more. Cuba driving in one of those. Jake Whitesides comes in from second base. It was six and then seven to nothing, Hickman. That's not all. Third inning, Dustin Truner, a two-run home run. All of a sudden, 10 to nothing, Hickman. The Cupies go on to jolt the Jays 15 to three. Jefferson City finishes the season at 22 and five. Hickman advances as district champions. And so do the New Bloomfield Wildcats, beating Jamestown 11-1 in the district finals. The Cats have won 15 out of the last 16 district. I'm proud to announce today that as a result of uh, operations, up. They lead 5-0 over College Junction in the 6th. We'll have all the highlights in postgame tonight at 10. The Cardinals and Royals both continuing interleague play tonight. title. The Crusaders dominated Carl Junction today in the championship game. One of the reasons, Brad Bowman, a great day on the hill. He finished with 10 strikeouts on the day. Meanwhile, Helias gets on the board in the very first inning. Tyler Strope doubles into the right field gap. Joey Pringer scores to give the Crusaders a 1-0 lead. Then in the third, it's Phil Pitts. He hit two homers in the Sater sectional game, gets another one here, a monster two-run shot into the bullpen. Elias out in front for nothing. The Saders kept it going in the fourth. Brad Bowman singles to left. Max Rodeman scores to make it five zip. Elias was in control the whole way. Sam LeCure in to close it out in the seventh. Strikes out Heath Crowder, and that'll do it. Elias wins the 3A state championship six to one over Carl Junction. I told these guys at the beginning of the year, pitching and defense wins championships. And this weekend was vintage Elias baseball this year, was pitching and defense. Um, Sam threw great yesterday and Brad threw outstanding today. I couldn't, I couldn't ask for a better game pitch from Brad. Oh, it feels great with the crowd behind me and everything. This was what I've been waiting for all year. So I'm glad I come out and perform like I did. Uh, that feels great, but more often the, the win feels better than anything. Winning the baseball game is more important than individual stats. And, I get, everything that's happened, I give it all to our teammates. They're the best. No, I couldn't ask for more. You know, when we won yesterday, it became more reality, and it's the best. It's a great feeling. Can't explain it. And congratulations to the Helias Crusaders, the 3A, to the Helias baseball team. The Crusaders won the 3A state championship yesterday with a 6-1 victory over Carl Junction. It's Chris Weibrick's fourth state title with Helias. He won three as a player, but says his first as the Crusaders coach is even sweeter. Pretty good news. I don't remember in my years that two players of local caliber have been taken this high in the draft mm -hmm. together. So uh, pretty good news for a couple of players. Josh Reynolds could be pitching in the New York Mets organization this summer. The former Jeff City Jays baseball player and current Central Missouri State standout got an early call in today's amateur baseball draft. Reynolds, a right-handed starting pitcher, selected in the third round. The 95th player taken overall, the highest any CMSU player has ever been picked. In three seasons with the Mules, Reynolds has compiled a 32 and 4 record, a 2.64 ERA, voted the MIAA's most valuable player and picked as a Division II first team All American. Again, Josh Reynolds, the Jefferson City High grad, picked by the New York Mets in the third round today. 
And Missouri's all-time high school home run leader, Jake Whitesides, goes in the fifth round to the Houston Astros. The Columbia Hickman graduate was taken as the 157th player chosen overall, number 20. Whitesides has already signed a letter of intent to play college baseball, but as a fifth round pick, could easily turn professional instead. And one other area player taken so far, Missouri Tigers center fielder Nick Wilfong, number 10, goes to the Giants as the 241st player taken. As for Missouri's major league teams, the Royals picking fourth, selecting high school senior Michael Stadalko from California, a pitcher with a fastball clocked at 93 miles an hour. The Cardinals picking 13th, drafted Sean Boyd, a first baseman turned outfielder from Vista High in California. Pro yep. baseball careers. Josh Reynolds, the former Jefferson City Jays player and Central Missouri State standout, got an early call in today's amateur draft. Reynolds, a first-team All-American at CMSU, taken in the third round by the New York Mets. The 95th player taken overall. Reynolds dominated the MIAA conference again this That's season. Really His career that. record, 32-4, and four, with an ERA around 2.5. As a junior, Reynolds is the MIAA player of the year and very likely will move on to the pros after an impressive third round selection in today's draft. Missouri's high school home run king, Jake Whitesides, number 20, a fifth round selection today. The Columbia Hickman QP slugger taken by the Houston Astros as the 157th player chosen overall. Whitesides just graduated from Hickman High in Columbia. One other area player taken in the early rounds today, Missouri Tiger center fielder Nick Wilfong, the 241st player selected, drafted by the San Francisco Giants. Wilfong, who wears number 10, is a junior at the university originally scheduled for yesterday. And Smither Angeling and Randy Johnson. Bills 8-5 in the seventh. Colorado big over L.A. in the seventh. San Diego by one over San Fran in the sixth. Oakland over Seattle. Doc Gooden won his third straight as the Yankees beat Baltimore. Tampa over Detroit. Texas edged past Anaheim 6-5. Another good year for the Jefferson City Post 5 American Legion baseball teams. The junior squad, 16 and under, won the state championship last weekend and will leave for Chanute, Kansas for regionals tomorrow, opening play on Friday. The senior American Legion team worked out tonight, preparing to defend its state championship. They hope they get a chance. The post five seniors from Jefferson City have won the last two state titles. First, though, it's off to zone competition in St. Charles this weekend. That is a goal. I mean, that is what you go for every year because, man, we just want to beat those teams out of St. Louis, Kansas City, and uh, say that, hey, we're, we're number one in the state of Missouri. Probably to go as far as possible. I mean, it'd be nice to win the state championship again. It'd be three years in a row if we win it this year. That'd, that'd probably be one of our bigger goals to win the state. Post five will play Washington tomorrow night in St. Charles in the zone tournament. Favorite. If a woman exactly. wanted to use her hand back there, you wouldn't let her because you can't have anything oh. damaged, can you? 